we could be nearing the end of expansion talk. And we'll start off with an article from Matt Hayes over at Saturday Down South. And it says that his sources tell him SEC wants to end expansion race and stay at 16 teams. Now, the first line of this says the preference of SEC presidents is to not expand beyond 16 teams. Multiple industry sources tell Saturday Down South. Said we're positioned at 16 teams for a robust future. The need just isn't there. Now, it does say potential future moves on the expansion front could change that need, two SEC sources say, but conference presidents believe the SEC is positioned well for the future growth of college football. And, you know, another source told him that I don't see any expansion move as threatening to us. They were asked about Notre Dame coming uh, to the Big Ten. Would that be threatening? And that source said, why? I'll put our product against anyone's product, so we're just going to add schools to add schools. There's no value in that. This is something, if you've been following me on Twitter, I've been talking about for a little while now, and that is uh, you are quickly approaching diminishing returns on a per-school basis when you start just trying to add a bunch of teams. The schools right now are making a ton of money. Uh, One of the notes that is in here talks about the difference from 20 years ago to this year. In 2002, the SEC distributed $95.7 million in media rights revenue to its 12 schools. That's $7.97 million per school for one season. In 2022, that number was $777.8 million for 14 schools. That's $55.5 million per. They are getting close to $100 million per school once Texas and Oklahoma join. Who else is going to bring the value of Texas and Oklahoma? Does Clemson really bring that? Does Florida State bring that? I I don't know that I believe that. Yeah, it would make for some juicier matchups, but you can still schedule those non-conference. There's a way to, to actually enhance your brand by not going further than what you've already gone. You almost had to bring in Texas and Oklahoma because if you didn't, they were going to go somewhere else. The conference that they were in was not getting the kind of media rights deals that the SEC or the Big Ten was getting. They were going to go somewhere. So you really don't have an option at that point. But when you start talking about some of these other schools, yes, I've said that the crown jewel for the SEC would be North Carolina. Uh, They check all the boxes. But you're still getting to a point where maybe they don't bring in as much value as what it would cost on a per-school basis for those kind of TV contracts. Like, there is a bubble. There is a, a certain limit that you can get to where it no longer makes sense for you to bring in some of these other schools. Another thing that was brought up here, I'm going to bring this article back up. There is value in keeping the, keeping the college football world a little bit split up. Having everybody have a seat at the table. The message is clear is what it says here. College football is better with all involved. Uh, Greg Sankey, Or another SEC source said, we talk about value all the time. Well, there's great value in college football as a whole. Uh, I don't think any of us in any conference can ignore that. There's too much empirical data that shows it. I mean, Greg Sankey said that the preference of SEC presidents is a playoff that includes all of FBS. So all this stuff that we have talked about here on the show and elsewhere about the idea of just an SEC and Big Ten playoff, yeah, it's still out there. It's still a possibility Is it what everybody wants? No, because what you do when you lock out more than half of the country as far as FBS schools are concerned, there's no value. They don't care to watch your games anymore. They're going to watch the games that revolve around or that include them, that there is some importance to what they do. Washington State fans and Washington fans are still going to watch USC play Ohio State because... They could end up playing them in a playoff or in a bowl game or something along those lines. They are still somewhat connected. It's it's going to be interesting to see what this landscape looks like going forward. But I think that we've begun to reach a point where the expansion is going to slow down again. The Big Ten was put in a similar situation that the SEC was put in. With USC and UCLA, it was the same as Oklahoma and uh, Texas. They were going to go somewhere. If you did not take them, somebody else was going to. So why not just 
go ahead and handle that. And now you've got 16. You've got your conference spread across. But who else brings the same value that those brands do? And I don't know that there is anybody else out there. We can talk about Oregon. We can talk about Stanford. Notre Dame is, of course, the great white whale. But Notre Dame is not going to go to a conference. They're in a much better position even now to stay independent than they were before. Now, a lot of this hinges on what ends up happening with the playoff after 2025. But, I mean, we still got three years. We still got a little ways to go. So I would not worry about this for quite some time. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.